first saw a fat bike, I thought it was ridiculous. Ridiculously awesome, very, very unique. It was something that I, I looked at and like, eh, I, don't, I don't know. Now, I, I think it has really found its legs or its wheels. It's something that I feel is not a trend. It is uh, starting to become much more of a popular thing to, to go out and do, whether it be winter or summer. A fat bike is any bicycle with a tire larger than 3.8 inches. Uh, 3.8 to, to 4.8 is kind of the, the tire range um, in today's market. I think what initially first tempted me to even consider getting on a fat bike was as winter approached, I just didn't want to give up my mountain biking. I wasn't ready to climb off the, the bike just yet and end up on the trainer indoors and so forth. So I started looking for other avenues to stay on the bike and, and that's when I saw someone on a fat bike and I said, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely for me. I'd say Anchorage, Alaska is really kind of ground zero for fat biking. It was really fueled by the Iditarod Ultra Sport. They used to be called Iditarod Invitational Trail Race up in Alaska, which was a bike race on the dog sled Iditarod course. And there was no specific products made for this event. So people started taking bike frames using hammers and two by fours and welding them and bending them. People developed their own fat bikes, just a tool to ride bikes in the snow. But it wasn't until 2002 that Surly came out with the first production fat bike that was called the Surly Pugsley. It was steel, it was very heavy, it was an awesome bike, but there were many improvements that could be made upon that bike. One of the first questions is, is it hard to ride? Is it, you know, super inefficient? I'm lucky enough to have rentals. I can hopefully talk those customers into giving it a try for, for even an hour. They aren't so intimidated by it afterwards. There's a lot of follow-up questions on, you know, how much does it weigh? What do they cost? Do you have one for next week that I can rent? Things like that. So it goes a long way. So it opens their mind and they realize that it is a viable option to go out and play. When 907 and Fatback bikes came about around the same time in 2008, 2009, they both started with uh, some custom titanium bikes uh, as well as more mass-produced aluminum fat bikes. Both of these products were uh, much, much lighter weight than the Surly Pugsley and also had much better geometry, uh, so much better position on the bike for riding in the snow. And that really helped make riding bikes in the snow much, much easier. So that furthered the kind of usefulness of those uh, snow bike products and made them much more popular amongst people. Now when we came out with our fat bike, we wanted to make it a very lightweight, year-round snow bike, dirt bike, sand bike, kind of all-around bike with big tires on it. And the goal is to make it very functional for all types of use. Our goal is to make the lightest fat bike out there. I really like carbon fiber bikes. I've always ridden carbon fiber, and in my opinion, there is no reason not to make a carbon fat bike. Now that there's carbon fiber fat bikes, I, I think that it's more of a year-round thing now. It's something that in the summer, you can go out with a very lightweight bike, you know, some companies even have a bike that's, you know, right at about 22 pounds. It's gonna ride more comfortably. It's gonna be going out and actually mountain biking on single track trail. And the coolest thing for me was you can take this machine, this, this this piece of equipment that everybody thought would be so slow and, and not very fun to ride. And as soon as you get out there and you bring other people out there for the first time, people's reaction is, wow, this thing's really fast. You can do so much on this bike. And I think from that point, I kind of always had in the back of my head that it's not a snow bike. They can be used in dirt and sand. You can go really fast. We have some awesome uh, professional racers who are riding our bikes and they just like them because they're fun and they're quick and you have traction. You can really do whatever you like with those bikes. Riding a fat bike, gives you a sense of freedom. Rallying down a trail as fast as you can go when you're on a ribbon that's sometimes only seven or eight inches has an element of excitement. You fall off that little packed ribbon trail off into the snow, you're over the, the handlebars. You don't get hurt, but you're gonna get cold and wet pretty quick. 
we decided to start Borealis Bikes, there's no question we were going to go anywhere else besides Colorado Springs. This place is great for riding people. Everything about Colorado Springs is great. We design and test all of our frames here in Colorado. All the bicycle assembly is done right here in our facility in Colorado Springs. Every single one of our aluminum rims, carbon rims, they're all hand-built wheels, which is something we're very, very proud of. And every single bicycle that is sold is assembled by one person start to finish. These are very, very high-end bikes, and we take pride in assembling them to a very high quality level. Fat bikes for Colorado, I, I think, are great in the sense that it is obviously very snowy in the winter in a, a lot of parts of Colorado. There's some sandier parts in Colorado and it's, it's allowing people to comfortably get out on their bike in those seasons. One of the reasons why Colorado is such a great destination for, for fat biking um, is, is that there's already that infrastructure here. Colorado's got a ton of uh, Nordic centers, got a, a ton of hiking trails, snowshoe trails, snowmobiling trails, and so forth that are very appealing for people to, to come and, and, and fat bike. When I rode my first fat bike, I was enlightened. It was uh, something that I went into thinking, oh, this is going to be sluggish, it's going to be heavy. Um, I after the ride, I, I was surprised. It was a, a bike that I had a lot of fun on. I aimed for every rock out there. It was something that you, it's fun to just kind of bounce around on. It's still cycling and it's, it's really fun. When I'm going down the trail on my fat bike, through the trees, whether it's tight trees or it's open trees, you know, sun's bouncing off the snow. It really just kind of lets me slip out of the moment of my everyday life or of my job and so forth. So I get out on the trail, I'm out in beautiful wilderness and snow, but I'm also being challenged. It allows me to go to a place where I find great joy, I find great peace, and it's, it's a quality life on, on a bike seat.